There are some voices, rare ones, that can take a moment in time and give it meaning. Voices of clarity that are themselves not easily defined. Hassan Kanafani, a writer, artist, journalist, playwright and politico, was one of those people. Surely as the Middle East turmoil keeps away the tourists... A video from 1970, a news report, captures Kanafani in the city where he made his name. In Beirut, a new business has developed. Revolution. Palestinian revolution. He's interviewed by Richard Carlton for Australia's ABC News. The Beirut leader of the Popular Front is Ghassan Kanafani. He was born in Palestine but fled in 1948, as he puts it, from Zionist terror. As the English-speaking spokesman of the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine, the PFLP, Kanafani made good TV, but he was by no means an easy interviewee. It does seem that the war, the civil war, has been quite fruitless. It's not a civil war. It's a people defending themselves against a fascist government. It's a moment of great confidence, of clarity, of vision, of conviction. And the way Ghassan Kanafani speaks in that clip shows all of this, this energy that was the hope of the Palestinian revolution. Well, the conflict. It's not a conflict. It's a liberation movement fighting for justice. Well, whatever it might be best called. It's not whatever. Kanafani picks up on a very important word, which for me resonated the strongest, and this is the word whatever. This is exactly where the problem starts. This is a people who is discriminated, is fighting for his rights. This is a story. And this is the narrative that Palestinians unfortunately have not been able to relay to the world. The Palestinian narrative as narrated by Palestinians is not something that the world wants to hear. Why not just talk? Talk to whom? Talk to the Israeli leaders. That's kind of conversation between the sword and the neck, you mean. Ghassan said it in simple and clear language. How are we supposed to have dialogue? You're coming to slaughter me. Put aside the sword so we can have a conversation. They're better that way than dead, though. Maybe to you, but to us, it's not. To us, to liberate our country, to have dignity, to have respect, to have our mere human rights, is something as essential as life itself. In the Arab imagination, Kanafani is remembered for his storytelling, which explored the Palestinian experience, statelessness, separation, and exile. In the West, he was the public face of the leftist PFLP, seen as one of the more radical Palestinian factions. Kanafani was not involved in the armed wing of the PFLP, or in the planning of high-profile airplane hijackings that the group became synonymous with. But he was an advocate of armed struggle and understood its mediatic value. If it went quiet, he wrote, no TV network would willingly give any Palestinian a minute of coverage to express themselves. Above all, though, Kanafani was a journalist, an accomplished one. Ghassan Kanafani was a multifaceted, multi-talented human being. He was very significant in the Kuwaiti and Lebanese press in their heyday. We're talking about the 1950s and 60s. Ghassan Kanafani was a central figure. I mean, he was associated with the founding of many magazines and newspapers throughout the region. Beirut in the 1960s and 70s was an extremely vibrant city. It was a truly Arab city and the Palestinian revolution it was kind of the last hope for people. And so that's why Arabs from all over went to uh, Beirut to be part of that last front for revolution and creativity and activity and literature and journalism. After the defeat of Arab regimes in the War of 1967 and the disillusionment that came with it, Palestinians took matters into their own hands. A national struggle for liberation took form. And for Kanafani, it marked a shift in thinking to the revolutionary politics of the PFLP. In 1969, he was made editor-in-chief of Al Hedef, the group's newly formed weekly magazine. Al Hedef was revolutionary in spirit and substance. 
It combined the PFLP's political messaging with analysis, humor, art, and calligraphy in a chronicle of the Palestinian resistance that linked it to anti-colonial struggles in Africa, Asia, and Latin America. He made left-wing media accessible well beyond the narrow confines of the already converted. He went after arguments by fellow Arab journalists as much as he went after arguments by Western journalists. His article were an unusual combination of satire, sharp witticism, as well as uh, information. I mean, can you imagine Soviet communist literature using humor and irony at that time? There was none of that. And Arab communists were even more dour, uh, more humorless uh, than the Soviet Union. So you can imagine when Hassan Kafani comes with this new form of media, it was entirely novel. Al Hadaf had an open door policy that made it a hub of cultural and artistic exchange. It was there that Kanafani and his associates produced some of the most iconic posters of the Palestinian Revolution. It was a progressive magazine with an engaged international readership, but it was the official party organ, some would say the mouthpiece, of the PFLP. I don't like the term mouthpiece. It's not true. Neither was it propaganda. We were not spreading propaganda. We were trying to get the truth to the people. That was the slogan of Al-Hadaf. It read, the truth is always revolutionary, which is what Lenin wrote. These truths were the refugee camps or the truth of the Palestinian situation. Al-Hadaf was open to accept all kinds of new ideas. And for this reason, I think the importance of literature and journalism and culture from that era is that it was the founding culture. Kenafani left a distinctive imprint on the Arab cultural and media space. There is his pioneering fictional writing, and then there is this huge body of journalistic work. And when you look at the range of his outputs, you get the sense perhaps that he knew his time was limited, that he had a target on his back. On the 8th of July, 1972, Kanafani and his niece were killed in a car bomb outside his home. He was 36. It was among the first in a series of Israeli assassinations targeting Palestinian leaders and cultural figures. In its obituary of Kanafani, Lebanon's Daily Star said he was a commando who never fired a gun, whose weapon was a ballpoint pen, and his arena, newspaper pages. Israel decided to go after all facets of the Palestinian national movement. Whether they were writers, journalists, combatants, they made no distinction whatsoever. They wanted to extinguish the flame of the Palestinian national movement in all its forms. Hassan Kanafani has gone through two lives. There was the life that he actually lived on this planet, and there was a second life that he has been living after his death, especially in the last 20 years. His iconic image is almost everywhere. There's so many Facebook pages dedicated to him, Instagram pages. Resistance for him was something that was not necessarily just an action. The heart of resistance could be in the written word and this voice of hope and aspiration and clarity and conviction we don't have anymore. And that's why this resonates so strongly with us today.